Welcome back to Freightways Now. This is our next carrier update with the one and only Thomas Watson. And Thomas, we're dump, jumping into the world of diesel. The world of diesel, fueling up on knowledge, sir. Um, big thing to look at here, we got the uh, DOE released every Monday, average weekly price paid at the pump. And looking at the situation, down 5.4 cents per gallon as of Monday. But one thing to pay attention to is, is that in spite of the fact that we are coming back uh, from a peak, uh, geopolitical events do have the potential of uh, further escalation uh, of disrupting uh, the, the supply and movement of energy. And so this is an interesting situation because right now, a lot of these movements are based on futures, commodities exchanges. Read this stuff by John Kingston, of course, if you want to get a better uh, dive into it. Uh, these are not things like U.S. truckers buying more or less. These are more uh, other issues with supply and demand. So one of the other things to watch for is uh, the size of the carriers and that they're exposed to it. Smaller carriers are still not really able to get a fuel surcharge on the spot market. If they have contracted freights, they may get one, but they're usually too small to get contracted freight. So you see the conundrum that we have right now. Uh, fuel has become uh, a situation where as we see these prices continue to be high uh, his compared to historical trends around in like 350, you know, below $4 a gallon, uh, it's a problem because it's coming out of your margins. That's the issue here. When I talked about uh, last segment, higher costs, Fuel is definitely one of those that it can catch you off guard. Yeah, and when we're looking at just not even diesel, but the energy market overall and looking at this time of the year, what can we expect going into some of the colder months in the U.S. in terms of energy consumption? That's gonna be a fun one. Europe right now is definitely feeling that. They're uh, buying uh, a lot of, uh, especially fuels and stuff on the spot market to build up their reserves. Diesel can fuel trucks and heaters. Remember that important factor, because if it gets cold, uh, we're gonna see a little bit more competition because uh, folks will use that as a fuel source as well, uh, in case that you're not able to get access to you know, your kerosene and other stuff. It's all like an onion, folks. Uh, depending upon your distillate and where it sits and how you're cooking it, uh, you're going to have different types and so another problem for diesel producers is that uh you know when uh one thing i'd heard was that um regular gasoline is also a byproduct of the diesel distillation process and right now the costs and refining uh, it's getting a little bit uh worse in terms of margins because well you're flooding the market it's good for regular drivers uh, motorists at the pump there's a lot more uh you know gasoline but for diesel and stuff it still operates in this weird niche final thoughts imo 2020 i keep talking about it because it really went into effect two years ago so might as well call it imo 2022 when we felt it um you know for ocean shipping and stuff that uh, ultra low sulfur diesel it's a lot more competition so when we look at will it ever get lower to where it used to be before these changes we don't really know because it could be a situation where the new price of fuel is over four dollars a gallon because now you have to compete with ships who aren't doing the really nasty high sulfur uh, stuff and that could be something to look at but what does it mean well this is the chart. <laughs> Net revocation and operating authorities. Uh, in the past week, we have lost 728 unique motor carries. If we had the rights to Sarah McLaughlin's in the arms of an angel, we'd be playing it and asking for a donation to a carrier near you. Thomas, we're looking at these net revocations and we're looking at the decline of 728. That's just almost like a, of course, symptom of the times that we're in. Of course, we've seen, uh, especially throughout earlier this week, how much capacity is still on the road, just completely loose right now. We're looking at this aspect of the market. How much lower can we go before we start to see some type of upward movement in rates or upward movement or tightness in capacity? Well, I would say uh, visualizing it, we have our baseline at zero. Historically, when we want to see changes in markets, it doesn't take a lot. But as you notice here, there were some months where over 2,000, on average, more than 2,000 uh, carriers, individual motor carriers, typically between one and five trucks, entered the marketplace and flooded it. Uh, you know, if we look at the extent beginning in July of 20, all the way through uh, the middle part of 2023, where we really started to feel that uh, also, you know, this is related to lower spot rates, it, we got a long way to go, a very long way to go. The problem is though, uh, and I haven't found anyone including myself, is we don't know how much of this must go down before uh, spot rates and volumes improve. And the best part of the joke, the punchline that no one's getting, is that uh, when we say the consumer situation has improved and freight volumes are better, what we're really forgetting is that just enough truckload capacity has gone out of business to make it feel that way. Because, you know, at the end of the day, this is such a great chart because it does take, uh, you know, 
when you revoke your operating authority and you get a new operating authority, and this is the difference. And so persistence, I would say we probably have another six months to go. It took this much time to build it up. Uh, the issue is of course, is that these carriers, most of these are operating on the margins. These are individual authorities. It doesn't represent how many trucks leave. So there is a big fear. And the reason we say pay attention to the margins is the ones are gonna fill it first are the freight brokers, canaries, and the coal mine because their capacity are these smaller carriers. And there's all, already a lot of warning signs going on. So I would say, Pay attention to this, look at spot rates. If we see some improvement, it'll probably be uh, at least Q1 because there's just nothing out there that would suggest we're suddenly gonna get buying more stuff. Uh, and even it's priced in, if we have a blip in terms of a traditional seasonality, uh, there's too much capacity to soak it in. So yeah, it's gonna be rough for a little bit. <laughs> Warning signs flashing all over the place. Tom, thanks so much for this update. A man that might have an an answer for the energy markets. We have Alan Adler next with Bill Priestley.